Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is a product review video over this head. What head is this? Because you're like, that looks horrible. This is the Summit. Hopefully you can see it. It's their Summit Vortec head for a small block Chevy. And I know some of you are thinking right away, uh, that's not a Vortec at all. That's not a Vortec pattern. Well, I'm gonna cover all that in detail today. So first off, I want you to know that Summit actually doesn't really make things. What they do is they pay companies to make things for them and then the Summit puts their logos on them, much like Jags. This head is actually, uh, I'm 99% sure it's a Dart head. So Dart makes or used to make a Vortec head for a small block Chevy and I believe this would be that head. And I'm gonna talk about why it's different from what it is and we'll get to all that in just a minute. But Dart, I'm not even sure Summit or Dart even sells this head anymore because Ever since COVID, the cast iron foundries have spent more time with customers that pay more money, which aren't aftermarket cast iron head things. So a long time ago, cast iron might've been more economical to buy than versus aluminum, but those days of sale between shipping and um, actual casting costs. So I don't know that they, some of even sells these. Could used to be a low buck alternative. Same with Dart. So you're probably looking at these injuries like, man, that looks really, really strange. Well, let me start with the chamber side and I'll come back to what this is, but let's start there. These are the chambers and instantly you're like, that is not a Vortec chamber because if you've ever seen a Vortec chamber, you'll know it does not look like this. You are correct. This reason why i 99% sure that this is a dart head and there's a couple clues. You see these water passages, that's a dart design. And you're like, nah, -uh. I got these aluminum heads from eBay or Amazon and they've got the same things. You wanna know why? Because they copied AFR. That's a copy, I'm sorry, they didn't copy, copy dart. This is a Chinese imitation of a dart head. And the reason why I have it here is to show you this. This chamber that you see here is the dart iron eagle. If you got a dart iron eagle and you got the non-platinum version, your chamber looks a lot like this. That's their chamber design. If you had the platinum one, your chamber looks like that. So if you've ever gotten a set of Iron Eagles and you're like, I'm not sure if they're platinum or non-platinum, what you could do is you could just look at the chambers. If it looks like this, that's the non-platinum. If it looks like that, that's the platinum. However, this one, I believe, is the 165cc head. And I believe they might have called it their uh, stock replacement head or something like that. But it had the same chamber shape and design. And that's what I believe this is. So what I think Dart did is they took their 165cc head and said, hey, there's a market for some people wanting some Vortec heads. Why don't we sell them a Vortec head? But we don't wanna do a whole new casting, spend a lot of time on tooling to design a Vortec actual head. Why don't we just try to see if we can't convert what we have to work with a Vortec? And that's what I believe has happened. Because this chamber, like I said, it's the non-platinum chamber version of the Iron Eagles. But if you were looking at their SR or stock replacement ones, it would have the same chamber. And I think they took the 165. And that's what it is. And then made this their Vortec head. How did they do that, right? Well, obviously they didn't change the chamber. But what they did do, and hopefully the camera captures this well enough, which doesn't look like a wheel from that from this angle. There we go. They put a nice five angle valve job on. One, two, three, four, five. So we've got five angles. And they used a little bit of a bowl cut here to kind of open up the bowl here. And on the exhaust, they left a hell of a ridge there. That's why it doesn't flow very well. And they put their radius valve job. The valve size came in at 1.94 and 1.50. Now I've got flow numbers to go with this. So if you're still watching, you made it through this. I'm gonna give you flow numbers this whole thing. But, um, it's a 194, 150, just like your factory Vortec head would have. Um, so same size there. Chamber, obviously different. Chamber size is 64 cc's. And as you could tell, much like the Vortec head, they are a standard plug. So straight plug. Now let's get to this part. This ugly looking thing you're thinking is not a Vortec pattern. It's because it looks like what Dark did, now that you can see from this angle. The ports, as you could tell, if you just squared them, would be the regular square port, 165 cc runners. But it looks like they just said, you know what, we can convert these to Vortex, you know, to get the injectors because stock Vortex had an injector. Um, if we just cut out a little groove right here at the top of the port, and that looks like what they've done. 
They just cut a little groove. As far as your intake pattern here, which is what you see here, instead of drilling and tapping the holes for your conventional small block, they put the Vortec pattern in. And that's all that they've done. On the top side, ugh, they did help you out a little bit. They drilled and tapped for the, because all their dart heads have this, are drilled and tapped for screw and studs, so that's good. And they did this other little cut here so you could run a larger spring, but you'd have to run a step. Because if you notice on the um, our Iron Eagle heads, you can up, run up to 155 spring. Well, because these are using the one little 125 springs that Vortex would have, they put a little step there. So it sits in there to keep it from moving or rotating or moving around, I should say, ladder up and down and stuff. So there's that. So essentially, there you go. Now you're like, what about the valve covers? If you notice, see those blocks? That's where the standard valve cover would be. Although they just milled it out so you couldn't bolt on the standard valve cover. Had I, which I don't understand that. To me, that seems like an extra machining that didn't need to be done. You could have just left the bolts there so people could run either valve cover, either the center bolt or the outside ones. But the center bolts are still there. And now here's the exhaust ports. And if you ever picked up an Iron Eagle, that's what the exhaust ports look like. This is another clue of what they look like compared to a platinum. So let me kind of show you this too, just to give you an idea. Yes, this is an Amazon head, but if you ever get a platinum version, the ports look squared off like this. And the most, the aluminum versions completely milled flat like this, not that. The dart ones that were, um, the platinum will have a little dart that actually shoots through. The older non-platinums will just say dart. Um, but anyway, that's the exhaust ports. That doesn't look like a Vortec one at all. So yeah, that's what I think it is. By the way, you can see the core lines. When see, these, see how it has a step here? You ever wonder why that is? It's because whenever they cast these, there's a top piece of the mold and a bottom piece of the mold and it's shifted. And so you've got a shift. That's why that's there. But that's it right there. It's essentially what it looks like, but you really want to know, well, how good is this thing, right? How, how good or bad? Well, first I'm going to show you this. Dart's known, and even though this is Summit, like I said, I think it's made by Dart. Dart was always one of the first to advertise that they use manly valves. So it's a good valve, but if you notice something about the valve, this is the intake one. It has a no back cut. This is the exhaust valve. It has no back cut. Now, you don't really need a uh, back cut on the exhaust, but the intake one having one would really help low lift flow. But how did it flow? So I'm gonna go ahead and get my flow sheet out here to show you because I floated on my bench. Floated on the signs and digital 680, 4030 bore. Here are the flow numbers. It's better than I thought. At 400, it does 220. The stock Vortec does worse than that, just barely. I think it's like 218. So this is a few CFM better there. At 500, the stock Vortex usually like 228. Some are doing 232. This is 245. So it's way up from a stock Vortex. And it keeps flowing. So it goes all the way to 233. Stock Vortex usually about 515. They drop and flow just like this one does, but worse. They'll go back to the 220. So this is about 15 CFM better on exhaust. Or I'm sorry, on intake. On the exhaust, what you see here is almost the same as what a stock Vortex flows for exhaust. And that's largely due to this step, which I'm gonna try again to capture on camera. I'll make it see. There, see that step? That's left there for machining um, where they cut in the seat and stuff, but in valve job. But if you got rid of that step, easily it's gonna go probably 160, 180. So that's the reason why that's lower. But that's still about the same flow as this Vortec exhaust. And there you go. So that's the flow numbers and everything on it. I float it without an exhaust pipe. Um, as far as the aftermarket Vortec heads that I've seen, it's, uh, it's pretty close. The EQ Vortex, which are no longer available, they would do, I floated a bunch of them back in the day. The good ones did 242. Some of the worst ones did 238. So this is really in line with what that's flowing, even though it's really just a 165 SS head that's got a little cut at the top. But uh, anyway, so hopefully you got something out of this video. They do use cast iron guides. That was the other thing. If you notice when I was showing the bowl, they're not bronze guides. So you might say, why do they do that? It saves cost. So let me just show you real quick again. See that? There's no bronze or brass. 
that's all cast iron. It saves costs because when they cast the head, all they have to do now is just cut the hole, ream the hole, and you've got your guide. Aftermarket heads, they cut a hole and then put an actual guide in it, like a, a bronze one. So this just saves costs. These are supposed to be some of the cheaper heads. Anyway, there's your little product review of this. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. You guys, remember I'm Nostra Man and take care.